Hello everyone, it's great to be here. Or not really, but you get the idea. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to tune in. I'd like to take the opportunity to posit something that is both intuitive but also non-intuitive. And this thing takes constant internal thought and effort to maintain. What is it? It's the mentality of it is not about you. It's not about me either, but it is not about you. I argue that through this mentality and the subsequent actions you and others will take with this principle in mind will overall make our world a better place. What do I mean by that? This life, this world, this planet, this universe does not revolve around you or me. There's 7.8 billion people on earth, so how special could one single person really be? I don't think there's anyone who would deserve a special kind of treatment that puts them morally above someone else. That is, being exempt from accountability from their actions, so long as they executed them with their own agency. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, duh, I learned that when I was a child. You know, maybe when you wanted something really badly, like a toy or a candy, and you made a big fuss about it, your parents were like, nah, uh, uh, you can't have this. Don't be selfish. The whole world doesn't revolve around you. I'd ask for a show of hands for the people who've heard that from someone in their lives, but to be honest, I, I can't see you. So I'm going to assume that a good number of you have heard this. So what does that mean? For one, it means that it's a value that many people have decided is a good value to hold. It evokes feelings of selflessness, which, as we all know, is the positive side of the coin where selfishness resides on the other. But this is more than just selflessness and selfishness. That's too easy. Of course being selfish is bad. It's an insult to call someone selfish an intuitive criticism of someone who is too self-centered. I'm talking about personal fulfillment and self-interest versus societal obligations and social good. Personal fulfillment is good for your happiness, and self-interest is rational. But I really don't care about that. This is what I mean when I say that it is unintuitive. What do you mean I shouldn't be happy? Do I not deserve happiness? Can I not pursue my own self-interest? Eating, drinking, making money, spending time with friends and family. Is that not all self-interest? Do I have something to gain? As in, is it within my interest to pursue such things? You're telling me that this doesn't matter. Yes. Yes, I am. I'm saying that in the grand scheme of things, these pleasures and privileges that we enjoy today do not matter too much. Or rather, they only matter insofar as we ignore the long-term consequences and current detrimental effects on those that we do not see or choose to ignore. When these are put to the test, they just don't work. It's not a sustainable thought. There are things that matter, or at least should, matter more. Take a look around in Canada. In the context of our capitalistic society, there is homelessness, poverty, and reserves without clean drinking water. Does my own personal happiness hold a candle to any of these things? No, because when it comes to lives being lost, I'm quite sure what is more important. Take the classic example we say today in these uncharted waters with COVID-19. Without the reduction of happiness, self-interest, and fulfillment, our public health measures will not work, and more people will die each and every single day. It is not sustainable to say, well, the loss is I should only see one other household, but I know these people don't have COVID, so it's okay to see them. If everyone thinks and acts like this, which many do, then we continue down this path of infection, prolonging what is making us unhappy, and more importantly, raising death numbers. Can we really say, that our own personal happiness can measure up to that. And that's the interesting thing about crises. When we push our mentality to the limit, we realize it's unsustainable. But then when we look back to normal life, 
we can also see that it is not sustainable. There is something fundamentally wrong with individualistic thought without careful calculation, consideration, and justification of the implications of our personal actions effect on others. And this is where it becomes intuitive again. I'm not saying that personal fulfillment or self-interest is bad wholesale. I'm saying that the wholesale consumption of this is getting out of hand, and thus we require balance. A reduction of the emphasis of individualism and a realignment of what is good for everyone. And this is intuitive. Can you really disagree that we should be mindful of others? I can't hear or see you, but I know a lot of you make an effort to recycle. Separate the plastics from the garbage, from the paper, from the organic material, from the blue bin or the green bin or the black bin or the yellow bag or what have you. Oh my goodness, what a hassle. Can you believe that we do this? That we sacrifice personal convenience for the greater good of environmental protection? Of course we can, because it is a societal norm to do so. And you get shamed for not recycling here in Canada. We sacrifice personal conveniences all the time. Traffic laws, walking on the right side of the road, holding doors open for people, paying taxes. So it's normal and somewhat intuitive. But how far can we push the envelope for this? How much do we need to sacrifice? Well, the thing is, we don't actually need to go too far because many publicly responsible actions are self-interested as well. As in, you probably stand to benefit from public goods to some extent. Take universal healthcare as an example. Some of them, like taxes, have serious legal consequences for failing to adhere to them. Others, seemingly, have no consequences or obligation. You know when you go to the grocery store, the highlight of lockdown, and you finish your shopping for a Nutella or whatever? As you exit the doors or finish unloading your groceries into your car, you have a choice. Will you return the shopping cart to its rightful place? Or will you leave it for an employee to do so? You have no requirement to return it, and it would be a bit more inconvenient. Yet somehow, you know that the person whose job it is to rally up and return the carts would appreciate it if you did. It's a combination of culture, society, and the law that upholds and supports norms that we both believe in and acknowledge accountability for. And it is the careful calculation, consideration, and justification of the implications of our actions that helps us navigate our daily lives within society and the norms that we adhere to. COVID is an example of this wherein we have to constantly consider our actions for our health and safety, as well as for others. But there are also people in society who do not care about the greater social good, refuse to wear a mask, don't adhere to social distancing, don't follow the law, and spread misinformation. When people prioritize their happiness at the severe cost of others, is that not just selfishness? I really do believe that it takes the mentality of it's not about you to zoom out and realign our thought processes so that when we weigh the outcomes of our actions, we don't do it on the sole account of self-interest. This naturally works for fighting on the behalf of social justice. We fight for causes that may not inherently affect us as individuals, depending on your identity markers, but having the mentality of it is not about you is integral for practicing good allyship, standing in solidarity, and advocating for the right causes. Also, it is important to note that if it is not about you, then we must know when to give space and time to those that need to speak or express themselves. Now, here is where I have to self-critique. I think the biggest challenge to my argument is the question of scope. What is it defined as? I said at the beginning that I think that the world could be a better place. So does that mean that my scope is global? Am I talking about a global society? Because if so, I have to acknowledge that my argument becomes harder and harder for people to execute as I make the scope bigger and bigger. Yet despite this, that is a huge part of my talk. To expand the scope outside of yourself 
and your own personal bubble. We can only personally know and deeply care about so many people. And in general, we will prioritize these people that we're closer to in a given situation. Does this mean that by nature, we have an outer limit of care? I don't think so. Not only because humans have such great capacity for empathy, even at the expense of our own personal gain, but also because rarely do we have a false dilemma wherein we are forced to choose between someone close to us and someone more unfamiliar. It's not necessarily a situation where you would have to choose between saving your mother or a stranger from drowning. We don't have to feel indifferent to some to feel compassion for others. I think we can generally agree that we don't explicitly want to hurt anyone for no reason. But then we must ask ourselves the most uncomfortable question. Who are we hurting? And when I say we, I am referring to those of us that reside in the global north. The global north is comprised of nations generally north of the equator, with developed powerful economies, relatively stable systems of governance, an abundance of technology, and an aging population. These nations, such as colonial powers like the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, the USA, and yes, Canada, have great power and privilege in the current international system, whereas the global south, generally speaking, have weaker economies, political instability, and are dependent on the global north, who continue to dominate in the realms of international politics and trade. Every single day, with every product that we consume, we contribute to the domination and disadvantaging of the people of the global south. Our phones, made with the cobalt mined from slave child labor. Our clothes, spun by underpaid, underage workers. Our cars, emitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, raising global temperatures and polluting the air. Our thirst for oil, driving war and conflict that destabilizes the Middle East. Our garbage, shipped in boats to other countries to be sorted, processed, or burned. We don't want to hurt anyone, yet we do. And ignorance, willful blindness, and a hyperfixation on the self contributes to this cycle of harm. Some say that it's human nature to be rational and self-interested, but we have to consciously fight really hard and reject this notion when it comes to important matters. Otherwise, we will continue to live in a world that is not optimal, not fair, and not just. We need to start thinking about matters of social justice, climate justice, public health, and civic and international responsibility like we do about recycling. Intuitive. So, I have three questions that I would like us to ask whenever we make decisions. Number one, why am I doing this action? Number two, who am I affecting with my action? And number three, is the cost of my action worth it? Or is there a more responsible way to achieve what I want? It's not about you, but only you as an individual with your own agency and actions can make the choice to make it not about you. And to the people here in the room, your own rooms, I sincerely hope that you join me in this. Thank you so much for your time and attention, everyone. Please stay safe, and I hope to see you soon.